Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, I'm Prasad and you're watching Kini Flash. If you're a politician, you've probably been slandered. For example, Pera DAP Chief Nga Komeng is no stranger to being accused of making racial remarks. He's a seasoned politician, so he's usually level-headed when it comes to facing such allegations, usually dismissing them as fake. Well, someone has managed to piss him off. And what did it take? A photograph of him with his arm raised next to the words, quote, Malayu, and another word that starts with the letter P that I can't really say here. Below the image, the caption read, quote, this is the racist attitude of DAP leaders. They have sown hatred, which has led to the Chinese hating Islam and the Malays. Describing the image as disgusting, the Tulok Intan MP said he has filed a police report and also tagged the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC. But it didn't stop there. On Twitter, he also wrote, quote, Those who created and spread slander will be engulfed in hellfire and damned by God. Have you guys been outside lately? What is going on with the haze? It's so bad that even Malaysia's Energy, Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change Minister Yobian expressed concern about the haze situation in a meeting with Indonesia Embassy's Minister Councillor Agus Badrul Jamal and Councillor for Information, Social and Cultural Affairs Agung Cahaya Sumirat. So where is it coming from? According to Indonesia's Environment and Forestry Minister Siti Nurbaya, the haze blanketing Kuala Lumpur originated from Sarawak. She told Tempo.co, quote, There is information that they did not disclose because in actual fact the haze that entered Malaysia to Kuala Lumpur is from Sarawak, from Peninsula Malaysia and perhaps parts of West Kalimantan. She added that the Malaysian government should explain it objectively. Situr Norbaya's claim came despite the ASEAN Specialized Meteorological Center's tracking showing that the haze in Peninsula Malaysia primarily originated from Sumatra, while the haze in Sarawak originated from Kalimantan. The tracking as of yesterday showed widespread hotspots in Sumatra and Kalimantan, with the center of dense haze concentrated in the two regions. US President Donald Trump may have cancelled peace talks with Afghanistan's Taliban, but here at home, the peace talks between the different factions of PKR may finally begin. PKR Vice President Zuraida Kamaruddin said the party president, Anwar Ibrahim, has agreed to a meeting. I think it too earlier they checked out a meeting, mm -hmm. but then, then after that they got to he's willing to meet. So of course we want to meet him lah because we want to speak to our president. Maksudnya tak nak bercakap dalam meeting ramai-ramai nak jumpa. No, we want to speak to, with the elected members. Orang yang dah kena elected tu kita nak jumpa dengan president itu saja. Tapi dia kata ha. datang saja meeting lebih elok macam mana tu? Ha. Tak apa dia dah janji nak jumpa. Kita tunggulah. <laughs> Previously, Zuraida openly admitted that there was a split in PKR and said it was up to the party president to mend the rift, which widened with the recent sex video scandal dogging Deputy President Muhammad Azmin Ali. The two factions are supposedly one led by Anwar and another by Azmin. While it's important to lodge reports on wrongdoings to authorities so action can be taken in accordance to the law, some people have been misusing the report function. MACC Chief Latifa Koya has urged politicians to stop using the graft buster as a political tool to attack other leaders. She said politically motivated reports made it hard for the MACC to maintain its professionalism and integrity. She told the Malaysian Insight that there were many cases where people would lodge reports and later expose their reports to the media. Eh, hey, korang ni kenapa tak nak belajar bahasa Melayu? Tengok, pegawai kementerian dah tegur. Education Ministry Representative Samsudin Mohamad said that the Malaysian's grasp of Bahasa Malaysia should be improved as mastery of the language is a critical ingredient for achieving unity. Samsudin, who is the Ministry's Education Planning and Research Division Unit Head, said many Malaysians were unable to speak Bahasa Malaysia proficiently despite school emphasizing usage of the national language. He said using the national language in the education sector was necessary to anchor the nation's strength and identity. Shamsuddin was speaking as one of the panellists in a forum today titled Strengthening Unity in the Education Sector. The event was held at the International Institute of Islamic Thought and Civilization in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, let's get serious now. You've seen what it's like outside, right? Now, don't go and start burning things in the open unless, of course, you want to be fined 500,000 ringgit or spend five years in jail. I'm not playing. The Environment Department has imposed a ban on open burning in the whole country except for cremation, 
religious purposes, barbecues and flaring until the end of the southwest monsoon period. Director General Norlin Jaffa issued the order in view of the haze that has enveloped the country since September 5th. The southwest monsoon prevails from May to September. Norlin said offenders could be fined up to 500,000 ringgit or sentenced to a jail term of up to five years or both. Maximum compound fine of 2,000 ringgit can also be imposed for every offence. If you see people burning things openly, report it to the Department of Environment at 03-888-91972 or 1-800-882727. Now let's look at some international headlines. Being President of the United States isn't an easy task, but being a member of President Donald Trump's administration may actually be more difficult. Uh, good afternoon. Uh United States President Donald Trump abruptly fired his national security adviser John Bolton amid disagreements with his hardline aide over how to handle foreign policy challenges such as North Korea, Iran, Afghanistan and Russia. Bolton, a leading foreign policy hawk and Trump's third national security adviser, had pressed the president not to set up pressure on North Korea despite diplomatic efforts. Bolton, a chief architect of Trump's strident stance against Iran, had also argued against Iranian Trump's suggestions of a possible meeting with the Iranian leadership and advocated a tougher approach on Russia and, more recently, Afghanistan. The 70-year-old Bolton, who took up the post in April 2018, replacing H.R. McMaster, had also often been at odds with the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who is a Trump loyalist. So last night the president asked for Ambassador Bolton's resignation. As I understand it, it was received this morning. I'll leave to the president to talk about uh, the reasons he made the decision. But I, but I would say this, the president's entitled to the staff that he wants at, at, at any moment. This is a staff person who works directly for the president of the United States, and he, he should have people that he trusts and values and whose uh, efforts and judgments benefit him in delivering American foreign policy. It's what, uh, as cabinet member Secretary Mnuchin, I try and do each and every day. And when the president makes a decision like this, He's well within his rights to do so. A source familiar with Trump's view said Bolton, an inveterate bureaucratic infighter with abrasive personality, had ruffled a lot of feathers with others in the White House, particularly White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. Bolton, a former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations and Fox News television commentator, had opposed a State Department plan to sign an Afghan peace deal with the Taliban insurgents, believing the group's leaders could not be trusted. U.S. officials have said it was also Bolton who was responsible for the collapse of a summit in February between Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in Hanoi by recommending a list of hardline demands that Kim rejected. Jack Ma started a company in a small shared apartment in China 20 years ago. And now that it's one of Asia's most valuable listed companies, he's saying goodbye. A tearful Jack Ma formally left Alibaba on Tuesday donning a guitar and a rock star wig at an event for thousands of employees at the e-commerce giant he founded 20 years ago from a small shared apartment in Hangzhou City in eastern China. During a four-hour celebration in an 80,000-capacity stadium, Alibaba's billionaire executive chairperson delivered on his promise of a year ago to hand over to CEO Daniel Zhang. Costumed performers, some dancing to dubstep music and dressed in traditional Chinese dress, along with singers paid tribute to Ma's reputation for dressing up and performing at big events, entering to a parade of floats representing Alibaba's divisions such as shopping sites T-Mall and payment service and financial. Ma was spotted at one point welling up with tears as staff put on skits and sang songs, prompting the topic Jack Ma has cried to trend on Chinese social media platform Weibo. Toward the end of the ceremony, Ma, co-founder Lucy Peng, and CEO of Alibaba's technology committee Wang Jin donned rock star style leather jackets and wigs to perform Chinese pop songs. Ma's exit comes as Alibaba has grown to become Asia's most valuable listed company with a market capitalization of $460 billion. It employs over 100,000 people and has expanded into financial services, cloud computing, and artificial intelligence. Ma also told attendees that he hoped to see Alibaba shoulder more responsibility to improve society amid the sweeping changes brought about by technologies like big data and 5G. And here are several other news highlights from today.
And that is all for me today. For more stories, go to kinetv.com. Don't forget to hit like, leave a comment, and subscribe. And Prasad, thanks for watching. Good night.